about David Huffman in the previous one. So when I was a graduate student uh, at University of California at Santa Cruz, um, I had the fortune of working with David Huffman. He was more or less retired at that point, uh, still teaching some classes. Um, and yeah, he was kind of interesting guy. Uh, during class, he'd be teaching and would need to do something and he'd ask a question. And the student would say, well, is the answer such and such? Uh, and he'd, his response was, I am, I'm waiting for answer. I didn't hear that. I'm waiting for answer. What I heard was a question. And I thought that was kind of a little bit intimidating. He's kind of was kind of an intimidating guy. Um, you know, very sharp, big, burly guy. Um, on the other hand, I, I, I'm still conflicted. Uh, you know, as a student, you're like, hey, well, you're here to learn. You don't know everything. On the other hand, the things he was asking were things like, hey, what is the cosine of 30 degrees? Uh, and this was a class where we'd been doing stuff like this for weeks and, of course, long past prereq, uh, pre-calc as a, a prereq for calc, which was a prereq for this class, which was for engineering and computer science juniors and seniors. So anyway, uh, but he does tell me when he was... Um, when he was faculty at MIT and he'd be on a, um, a PhD review board, uh, he'd sort of, if somebody sort of said something that, you know, they, he sensed a little bit of uncertainty, he would sort of hone in on it, he'd pick them at it. It's like, well, is, is this case, why, why is that? Well, wouldn't it be such and such? Uh, and he'd try to browbeat them a little bit, or he would just sit there and he'd sort of furrow his brow and look confused. Uh, and he was trying to, his theory was, if you knew your stuff, you should not back down and uh, you should know that, you, not only should you know it, you should know that you know it. Uh, and so he'd try to throw people off their pace. On the other hand, if they said something that was a little bit dubious or he asked a question during the oral qualifiers that, that was wrong, he'd just sort of smile and nod and try to get, draw them further and further down the wrong path. So yeah, anyway, uh, interesting guy. He didn't read his email. So, you know, I, as a graduate student, I've already been using email for eight or 10 years at that point. This is mid nineties, uh, late nineties. Um, yeah, he just have his, the secretary print out all his email and deliver it to him on paper. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, but he did tell the story during this class. He told the story of how he came up with Huffman coding. Um, he was taking a class as maybe his first semester at MIT as a graduate student. Um, and he would uh, had a class in algorithms and the teacher put down, I think the arrangement was something like, uh, hey, either answer one of these questions or take the final exam. Uh, answer one of these questions, think about it, present on your results. And so he, d he didn't really want to take the final exam. So he was working on this uh, one of these problems. And the problem was, hey, given a distribution of letters, find the optimal encoding, uh, static encoding for those letters. Um, this teacher kind of, you know, admitted to mention that this was an open problem. Um, so yeah, he worked on it, he worked on it. What can I put at the root? Maybe there's some rule here that look at the ratio of the most common letter to the second most common. The, uh, you know, all these things, drawing trees, it had all this note paper, notebook full of trees scribbled out, you know. And at some point it was about a, a week before the end of the semester and he was at breakfast with his wife and he sort of says, uh, no, that's it. I just got to start studying for that everything that I need for the whole exam. I, don't, I, I haven't been able to figure this out. And he took the whole stack of papers and he went over and uh, threw them in the trash can, walked out the door on his way to, to classes, uh, looked back, say goodbye to his wife, um, happened to glance down at the waste paper basket. And now from his orientation, the papers were upside down and all his trees were upside down. And he suddenly realized, oh, the smallest two things have to be at the bottom. And so, yeah, so he got his paper out. He's like, great, I don't need to take the final exam, sort of figure some things out. Goes up to present at the end of the class. And uh, yeah, he sort of says, the, talks about the problem, phrases it, talks you know, a little bit about uh, the constraints and so on. And then he says, okay, for a solution, we simply note that the two least probable letters have to be at the bottom. And from the back of the classroom, his professor was like, oh, and the professor didn't listen to anything more than that. You know, that was enough for the professor. He didn't know that the professor actually had worked on this for a while and tried to find a solution and never found it. So anyway, that's um, my inside info about Huffman coding and how it came about.